Right, so today's topic is probably the most technologically advanced uh, of the week. Something you're extremely excited about, rocket science, brand new. Um, but I think it's still uh, worth talking about. So the device resource management in the kernel got introduced quite some time ago in 2621. Uh, I'm not even sure I can do the math to calculate the number of years. It's uh, another era. Um, and it was uh, it came with a limited set at the time of uh, resource management functions. So you have the DevRest core that handles all the plumbing behind the scenes uh, that drivers are not supposed to use directly. And then you have a family of DevM functions that I'm sure most of you are familiar with today. And it was just a handful uh, at the time. Um, so it was handling uh, some resource management for your remap, uh, including PCI. IQ and uh, DMA memory location, as well as the, what I would call the infamous DevMKTL work. I think so. Uh, full screen. Yeah, that's better. Um, so what happened next? Uh, Quite a few versions later, actually, 2.6.28, uh, we got a first conversion of a driver uh, from uh, the usual allocation functions to, uh, to the DevM, DevM helpers. It doesn't mean that DevRest was sitting in use for seven kernel versions. Uh, it was used immediately in the first patch series uh, in, uh, in uh, LibAta, I think. Um, so there were some users, but conversions started coming uh, quite a bit later. Um, this is what a typical conversion looks like. I hope it's not too small, uh, but it's really about replacing the, the manual functions with a managed counterpart um, and obviously removing the functions that free the resources or free the memory. So as such, a typical conversion doesn't really cause a problem, doesn't conceptually uh, cause issues. If you look at what's there, there's no problem introduced by usage of DevMK as a login dispatch. <clears throat> However, the reason why typical conversion doesn't introduce a problem is, the important part is the word introduce. The problems were there all along. So it's not new bugs, uh, but it's an issue of not memory leak in this time, a resource leak, uh, DevRace handles that. But the issue is use after three. And you typically in a producer, so typically in a driver, you will allocate a data structure, you will allocate an object, you will allocate uh, a clock, uh, a regulator, if you are a regulator driver, you will allocate something, and you will register that with a subsystem. Um, and then someone, somewhere, a consumer will acquire that resource. You will have a driver clo calling clock get, uh, or any other function that will acquire that. Um, and at some point, the producer uh, may disappear. If your producer is a USB device, you can unplug the device physically. If it's a platform device, there's usually not going to be any, uh, any hardware unplug uh, directly in, in, in most cases. But what you can have is actually unbinding the device from the driver through CCFS, for instance. You can also remove the module, uh, which, uh, which kind of does the same. Um, and so the problem we have there is that if you unregister when unplugging a USB device, for instance, free the memory at that point, you, you disconnect function USB driver returns, the DevMK log helper will uh, have allocated memory that will be freed at that point. If it's used later by the consumer, you have a use after free. The, um, <clears throat> The typical use case uh, that I want to address here today is a case where the resource is exposed. It's not used just in the kernel, but it's exposed to user space. So you have a character device exposed to user space through any subsystem that uses character devices, lots of them. Uh, and it means that user space can open the device. And in most cases, uh, it's going to be unprivileged applications that we'll, we'll be able to do that. And we'll be able to keep the device open pretty much forever. And if you then disconnect your device, when you call the close function in user space, it's going to call the release file operation in the kernel, uh, you have your typical case of use after free. Obviously, if you want to fix that, uh, what we need to do is not to delay the unregistration of the resource. When your device is removed, you have to inform the subsystem that the resource is gone, but freeing 
the resources that can still be um, that can still be reached by the consumers needs to be delayed until the last reference, the last reference to, uh, to resource is released. So as I said, references can be inside the kernel. Uh, I'm mostly concerned about user space because that's where uh, we have the, the biggest potential for, for crashes and kernel oopsies by unprivileged applications, but the same thing applies to in-kernel consumers. <clears throat> so the question then is, well, I don't think it's an issue of DevRes as such. Uh, because when we are submitted, it made uh, a promise summarizing the commit message that the release functions for all the managed resources would be uh, called on driver detach. So that's what they promised. That's what they're doing, and that's that's totally fine. Um, but the problem is that most people heard we're going to release them by magic at the right time, and. I mentioned I was introducing 2.6.21. Uh, drivers got converted starting 2.6.28. And slowly over time, uh, DevM has taken over the kernel. We have today uh, around 170 uh, managed helpers uh, in lots of different subsystems. And we can categorize them in roughly four uh, big categories. You have the functions that handle resource allocation. Uh, allocating, uh, I put a few examples for each, allocating an input device. So if you're a driver uh, for, an, for an input device, you're going to call this DevM function to allocate device for you, and you won't have to free it in, um, in your remove handler in the driver. Then we have the same thing for resource registration that saves you uh, the, the work of doing the unregistration manually when the device is removed. Um, and then we have the resource acquisition. So the first two are you know, meant for producers. The third one uh, is meant for consumers. And uh, the last one, I would, the, the, there are a few of them, not that many, but I'll call that a bit of abuse of DevRes uh, because there are a few places in the kernel where frameworks want to associate arbitrary data with a struct device. Uh, and so there's DevRes usage there to um, associate the data, and then they use the DevRes uh, find function uh, to be able to find it later. So it's uh, kind of a, a free, uh, free association between random data and, and struct device. It was there and was used for that. Um, there's a shortage of magic. Sorry to, to say that. And, that's not going to be the focus of the talk. I, 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 I won't try to figure out how we can do magic, but how possibly we can do proper engineering to fix the problem here. Uh, but really, the question is how how do we fix uh, how do we fix that problem? So I want to emphasize. I already said that the promise that DevRes made in the beginning was not bad. It was very clear. I want to emphasize that I think that totally valid uh, use cases for for those APIs. Um, and clearly, acquiring resources that the driver model requires you to release before your driver remove uh, handler uh, returns, uh, that's something that's totally fine. Uh, the driver model requires that the platform device will not touch device memory after remove returns. And so if you IO remap that with a DevM helper, uh, the, the resource is freed at that point. If you ever touch it later, if you have a use after free there, it means you, you've done something really bad in the driver in the first place because you're not allowed to do that. So for that, I think it's totally fine. Acquiring clocks, acquiring regulators, and those, fine. The tiny cave at the bottom of the screen, actually it's, so it would be mostly safe because we still have the issue of ordering of the release of resources. Uh, so DevRest will guarantee that they're released in the inverse order that they acquired. Uh, that's normally what you want to do. Uh, but it's fairly typical for a driver and his pro function to mix and match managed helpers and non-managed helpers, which means that when you release, everything that's not managed needs to be released manually in the remove function, and that's going to go first. And then when it returns and goes back to the driver core, uh, all the managed ones will be released. So you can't guarantee the same order. In most cases, it's going to be OK. Um, but you could have, for instance, the device and the power domain being, uh, being shut down uh, at the bus level after you remove function return, so out of control the driver, but at the bus level. And then uh, later you will have the, all the DevRest resources uh, released, and that's going to uh, free the interrupt, for instance. 
you're supposed to have uh, shut down the device and you remove handler, so it's not supposed to generate an interrupt, but there could be kind of cases where we actually free some of the resource and disable a few things uh, after shutting down power of the device, and that may cause issues. I, I haven't been able to pinpoint any actual problem there, but that has been discussed on, uh, uh, on mailing this before, so it could, uh, could still be an issue. But that's not the one I want to, uh, to look at today. Um, we've very carefully ignored the problem, or when we talked about it, we very carefully decided not to do anything. Um, this was discussed, the exact same topic got discussed in 2015, so seven years ago on the, um, the kernel summit discussed mailing list, actually. It was a relatively long thread. Uh, it didn't get uh, picked as a, as a kernel summit discussion uh, topic at the time. Um, and um, so there's a, if anyone's interested to, to read a history, there's a link in the slides there. Um, so what I want to focus on today is the race between unbind, also called remove or disconnect, depending on what kind of driver you have. Uh, and the, so the race between unbind and user space closing uh, a device node. Uh, because I think that's, as I said, it's fairly dangerous, can be triggered by user space and hopefully relatively low-hanging fruit. So how do we fix that? Um, there may be people in the room who will have a quickly answer, rewrite the kernel in Rust. <laughs> that may be a solution, but I don't think that can be called realistically low-hanging fruit and sold very quickly. However, that being said, uh, it's not entirely a joke in the sense that <clears throat> what Rust brings is not just a language and tooling that goes around that, but also forces developer to consider lifetime management because otherwise the compiler is going to complain. And if you uh, get fluent in Rust and you consider lifetime management issues when you do Rust, when you write Rust code, uh, I'm fairly certain that you're gonna write much better C code afterwards. So I think that Rust would actually benefit the kernel uh, in areas that are not just the ones that would be uh, handled by the Rust language. Um, other solutions? Well, another obvious one, never free resources. And this, if you remove the free in use after free, there's just use after, and that's totally fine. In some cases, we may be able to do that. I mean, realistically, uh, the call clocks that are provided by the SOC, I don't think that we really need to care about the, the, the clock driver being unbound and removing all the clocks of the system. That's never gonna happen. So in those cases, in those kind of really low-level drivers, you may say, okay, I don't even need to free anything. And they're actually in, uh, um, in, in some subsystem. For those low-level resources, you don't even have any, uh, any function that, uh, that, can be, that will be called by the, by the subsystem to tell you that things have gone because they can never go away. Uh, but that can't be a universal solution. Uh, certainly for things get, that can be uh, plugged and unplugged, talking, again, USB devices, uh, you clearly can't, can't get away with that. So what else? Well, if we have to free the resources at some point, we have to ensure they are freed after the use. Um, and one way or another, that involves reference counting. It involves knowing uh, when nobody will use the resource anymore and when it's safe to free it. And we, uh, we actually have some of that already in the kernel. Uh, if you look at struct device, it has a release function that is called when the last reference to struct device goes away. So we have that. The thing is, it has to, it has to be plumbed through the, ho the whole inheritance chain of structures. If you have a struct device that's embedded in a, in a struct C dev, that's embedded in a struct video device in video for Linux, I'll take that as an example, because it's a subsystem I, I work with uh, very often. And then your video device is embedded in a driver-specific structure. Um, so you have this inheritance chain, and you have to forward this uh, release even all the way up, all the way to the driver, because uh, at the end of the day, what allocates the memory that stores everything is, is, is the driver. Um, so that's one option, uh, but it pushes complexity to all the leaf nodes, to all the drivers, uh, and I'm not entirely sure that's something that we can get away, uh, away with. Can we guarantee that through some magic, uh, all driver developers will uh, suddenly understand uh, the, complicate, uh, the, the, the complicated left and management issues. <sighs> yep. Uh, that also won't work because devices are not removed when you remove a driver binding. 
to a device. So there are, there are usually two struck device instances involved. True. Uh, think about a USB device. You have the struck device, I think, a USB interface. So that's a physical device that you plug and unplug in your system. But you also have the struck device that's associated with the CDEV that exposed to user space. Yes, the class, view, the user yes. space using the hardware field. And yeah. so that's the one I'm talking about here. The resources are linked to the lifetime management of what is exposed to user space. If we have a device not exposed to user space, we need to make sure that we free the memory that uh, actually stores that device node only when the last reference to it is freed. And so is it this track device? Okay. And it's nice to have a single structure uh, that, can, um, <coughs> that can model both the physical devices but also the device nodes. Uh, but it's also, I mean, technically speaking, there are some advantages to that, but it generates so much confusion when it comes to lifetime, lifetime management issues that, I mean, if you could rewrite the kernel from scratch, maybe you should do something else, but that's, that's not going to change. Um, so manual ref counting, even the subsystems get it wrong. These, these are two helpers from Video for Linux. Uh, and the bottom one is a function that is provided to be used by driver to be plugged as a release handler, and it does nothing. <laughs> so if you have a release handler that does nothing, I mean, quite clearly, there's even a comment there saying, have a static video device is a dubious construction at <laughs> best. Well, yes, it's, it's, it's very dubious. So even at the subsystem level, we get it wrong, which means that there's no way we're going to get it right in all the drivers. Um, other options. Something that was tried in the DRM subsystem, and I think it's uh, actually quite interesting. There are a set of um, managed helpers uh, in DRM, such as DRM M K Z L O C. Despite the name and the fact that it's documented as a managed helper, it does not use DevRest internally. It actually duplicates the implementation. So we have a separate implementation in DRM. The, the functionality is the same. The difference is that it ties the lifetime of the resources not to the lifetime of the struct device that corresponds to your physical device. That's, that's wrong. Uh, you don't want to, uh, to free those resources when, uh, <coughs> when the device is unbound. But it ties the lifetime to the struct device that corresponds to the character device exposed to user space. Uh, so that is the right lifetime. The drawback of that is, well, first of all, uh, it causes code duplication. We have a separate implementation of DevRest in that subsystem, subsystem and you have to replicate that in different subsystems. That's going to be lots of parallel uh, implementations. I think that could, that, that could be fixed. DevRes has added a few fields in struct device to account for the resources. We should be able to move those in a separate structure. I don't know how we would call that. I don't know, DevRes owner, for instance, something like that. With all the, the DevRes call functions taking a pointer to a DevRes owner instead of a struct device. And struct device would embed that. So we would still have the, the current uh, DevM helpers. But any subsystem that wants to uh, tie uh, lifetime management of some resources to a different object would be able to embed that DevRes owner in, uh, in a different object. So the code duplication, I think it should be able to fix that without too many issues. However, we, with this, we tie the lifetime of the resources of the memory that's allocated to one particular character device exposed to user space. So DRM subsystem, it's your DRM driver. Uh, sorry, your DRM character device that exposed to applications. That's mostly fine. In most cases, it's going to be fine. But if you have a driver that has to create multiple uh, devices, device not exposed to user space, because you have uh, more typical maybe in the, the video for Linux side, but you have to, to handle a device that has uh, video functions and audio functions. And maybe it's going to have a, it's a webcam with a few buttons on it. So you also need to tie it with the input device. And so all of a sudden, you one physical uh, device instant exposes uh, in an input device uh, CDF to user space, uh, one or multiple v to video nodes, and, and uh, audio related devices as well. So we cannot tie the lifetime of the top level object that's allocated by the driver to any of those. What we need to do is to make sure that any of those uh, character devices exposed to user space gets a reference to that high level object. And then when the last reference to it uh, goes away, we can free the resources. 
So, yes, over there. Well, actually, there's a second one. Yeah, actually, I think it's really wrong to expose multiple charge devices uh, by my driver. For that, you have an auxiliary bus, which is supposed to, to solve this problem. Every charge device will be exported by some, by one sub driver, which is connected by auxiliary bus. And uh, so all, all it's supposed to be released uh, by itself. No, no, that's not what auxiliary bus is for. Auxiliary bus is for carving up a physical device or a virtual device into smaller devices that are run controlled by drivers. He has unique user space representations to a device that user space sees, like video for loading. So you got audio, video control, all that stuff. That's fine. Auxiliary bus is not for that. Please don't. Two different things. That's, he's dealing with classes. You're dealing with drivers and buses. Two different things. Uh, right, but uh, he started to say he at the beginning he said that uh, one driver created multiple charge devices. Yes, and charge devices are created not by when you said driver, it means it's not class. Yes, no, he means charge devices are classes. Okay, yes, that's it. They're not, they're not, it's okay. Not, do not use auxiliary bus for this, please. <laughs> that's not what it was designed for. That's not why we added it. It solves a, a nice problem that we have, make things easier for subsystems. It doesn't solve this problem at all. Well, Greg said. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, but in most cases, uh, a driver for one physical device will create a single device node to use the space. Um, so we could still uh, use something like that, assuming that we could solve the code application issue. The, this may still be uh, be something usable, but we would have we would need a mechanism where we could somehow either bypass that or make it possible when when your driver exposes multiple character devices to user space to still handle manually or through a different mechanism uh, the the reference counting there. Um, another idea that's not something that has been proposed yet to, uh, to my knowledge or, or, or implemented, um, could we simplify the reference counting? We have a KRF object in, in the kernel. Um, and it's, uh, for this use case, this is something uh, typically in, so the UVC driver is the USB video class driver. So that's the one, uh, most of you will be using if you have a webcam, uh, USB webcam. <clears throat> because of the nature of those webcams, I said it's video, but they can also have input devices. So that's already multiple uh, char device exposed user space. But even on the video side, it can expose multiple video streams. So you can have multiple video for Linux uh, video nodes. It could be argued that video for Linux should have a single char dev exposed user space for multiple streams, but that's the nature of the API. And I don't think that's what we need to solve here today. Um, so what the driver does is that it has a custom UVC release uh, function that is plugged as the uh, dot release handler of the device. And when that is called, it's going to decrease the reference count on its own data structure. And when the reference count reaches zero, it calls UVC delete, will, which will just uh, turn the light off and, 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 and free the data. So that's, that, works, that part works fine. But it's, to get there, uh, there were actually quite a few bug fixes that were merged over time. So the first iteration was clearly not, uh, not correct. Uh, and, uh, and I think that means that it's, it's difficult for drivers to, to get there. So could we simplify that by, I mentioned that we, we have a relationship through the inheritance chain of structures. Uh, we know about that relationship. We have structures that embed each other. If those structures are reference counted, same way that uh, the struct device is reference counted, that video device uh, will be reference counted, that my driver structure will be reference counted as well. When we acquire uh, the, with a KRF get, basically, those references, would it be a way to have a bit of a different API where we could say, I'm acquiring uh, a reference because there's this, this relationship between two objects. I don't know how we would call them, KRF object or whatever. Uh, and then when you decrease a reference on an object, it would automatically decrease the reference on, uh, on the, the other objects that are connected to that. 
Ideally, it would also bind the release function uh, that you pass to, uh, to, to KRF put uh, at the creation of the reference uh, so that you don't have to remember it's in every location where you call KRF put. That gets a bit close to garbage management system where you have objects that can have uh, references to other objects and then when something is, uh, when a reference count somewhere reaches zero, it's gonna propagate uh, with the risk of having uh, loots in the references. Um, I mean, that's not something that should happen uh, in these kind of use cases. Uh, but is this too close to garbage collection to be acceptable or is it something that could be investigated? Uh, don't really have an answer to that question. I would be willing to give it a try if it's something that, if, if there's an overall feeling that it's, uh, it's a part that should be tried. Uh, if it's considered to be uh, too horrible, then we have to do something else. That's gonna be hard. That's gonna be really hard to make generic. Possibly. Uh, yeah, it might be, uh, that scares me. <laughs> Beside being hard, if it's doable, do you think it would be a good idea? No commitment, of course. I don't know. I, I, okay. I don't know. I think we have already some of it because we have the reference counting propagating through the device structures. So you have, uh, when you drop the reference to, parent, to, to a child device, you're going to drop references to parent, and eventually you'll get to some of a release function that will free. Uh, I think overall, you you need to separate thinking uh, resources attached to a hardware device object and anything that you expose to user space and they have yes. different different lifetimes and you just need to know how to severe the link at unbind or at release time and let them go their own happy ways. That's right. Yes. So if we can yes. generic or make that generic, because you've done this for video for Linux, DRM guys did it for DRM. Everybody else gets it wrong. If we can have that way to bind those two things together in a simple way, then it would provide this, because you've almost done this already in your own subsystem, right? So the, the example I gave for DRM with its own set of managed functions, uh, that I think would be refactored to, uh, to use a common base that different subsystems could use. Uh, so that would probably be uh, already a step in the right direction. Uh, and DevRes would, uh, would use the same. So it would be a mechanism to attach a set of resources to a lifetime of, to, to a different object. Um, and that could be uh, that could be any kind of object. So uh, that could simplify subsystems. On the video for Linux side, we do propagate the release functions. Uh, we do not have any managed helpers uh, that are created by by video for Linux. Uh, so not the equivalent of what exists in DRM. Uh, it's all manual work, which means that uh, most of the drivers, if not all, handle it wrong. Um, <laughs> so that's that's what makes me makes me think that we can't really push that uh, down to the drivers without any help. That's that's not going to fly. Uh, so given, I mean, given there's a question in the back. Oh, there's a question. So one one thing I worry about every time we I hear the word push it down to the drivers or what drivers should do is I worry about drivers can be in modules and modules can get unloaded. Yes. And so even if a driver tried to do this right, I could imagine them still getting it wrong because they they add their, you know, different dev managed free function and they say, well, when the character space device goes away, I call this function. Well, by then they may have been RM modded and there may not be no code backing that function anymore. So to some extent, I almost wonder if instead of extending the lifetime, it's almost handing off ownership. Like I'd rather see the ownership of the care device go from being managed by a driver saying, hey, the driver went away just put a bogus, you know, core managed care device in its place that just returns E and Val every time. But at least it doesn't totally die. If it were just for the C dev, maybe we could have a look at that. But the problem is that what's allocated by the driver usually have a top level structure that's gonna embed lots of things. Not a C dev directly, but a video device, an input device or whatever that has a C dev inside, but also different things that uh, are allocated by the driver. And so you need, I mean, I, I don't really see how you could pass ownership of all that to, to, 
well, some other code and still have the ability to uh, to shut down things properly and free the resources in the right order and, and know what to do, unless everything was going through managed APIs, possibly. Um, but back to your point about driver unloading, I don't think that's an issue because as long as you have a device node that's open by user space, the reference count on the module itself is increased, and so you cannot unload it. What you can do is to go, it's, it's, if it's a USB device, you can physically un unplug it. Uh, but driver is still there, so it means that uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, <coughs> disconnect function of the driver will be called, and when that returns, when the disconnect function returns, the driver will still be there until the last uh, user space file descriptor clo uh, uh, is closed. You need to, the driver has to guarantee that it will not try to access the device anymore. So anything that comes from user space at that point needs to make sure that it will not try to issue or to send a USB request, for instance, to the device, because you can't do that after it has disconnected. But you still have the code from the driver that's there that can uh, handle at least all the cleanup parts. Um, so it, that's, that's a separate point on the, uh, I listed on the, on the last slide. This is the race between unbind and close from user space. But you actually also have a race between unbind and usage of, of the device. Because if you have a system call, uh, a file operation that comes from user space, that is being executed and you unbind a driver at the same time, those will erase each other. And uh, it's very difficult to guarantee in your system call handlers, the IOCTL handlers, the read and write handlers, that it will do the right thing everywhere if at some point the disconnect handler pulls resources and uh, if it's possible to some extent through proper locking, uh, but I'm pretty sure that all drivers will get that wrong as well. Uh, so that's that's something else. Uh, the, the, there's a patch here I posted a while ago, uh, I think it was Dan Williams, I believe, who also posted a patch here last year uh, to improve the CDEV layer. Uh, we had a discussion, I think, Greg, on, on the mailing list, he said you would have a look at it on the CDF side, but uh, Dan actually uh, posted patches a year ago, so maybe we could revive that. But that's, that's a separate race condition that I think we should fix as well. Uh, there's lots of race conditions. Yeah. So, Just to, uh, that reminds me of an, an old, old discussion we had. Uh, if I remember correctly, we pretty much gave up on module removal because we never got that ref counting right anyway. And so, as far as I know, unless we change something here, the official policy of the Linux kernel is module removal is not a supported operation. You can force it, but it is not an officially supported operation. Have we, have we changed that statement? No. Okay. You know, in, in RDMA, we dealt with and solved all these problems in, in various ways, and, and module renewal was a customer use case. We actually yeah. needed to hot unplug a driver and leave behind, like you talked about, like a, a stub where the I, the char dev returns, you know, you know, no dev everywhere. And it's very complicated. But like, if you do your layering properly and follow normal idioms, it's cheap. So, I mean, this always comes up of the well, if we do it properly, and it's never going to be done right if well, it's just yeah. based on yeah. reasoning to get it's, it right. What it's, tool is, is there tooling that can be done? Is there ways to implement the API so that when it is done wrong, because it will, we can find it? We're discussing with Greg earlier. Uh, maybe we can get help from our friends on the compiler side. Um, the typical characteristic of something that has its own lifetime is that there is a caref in it. So maybe we could come up with some form of compiler plugin or something that spots that we are assigning the re output of a devm function to something that has a caref in it. And that is probably always going to be incorrect. And mm. so we might be able to find ways to at least detect them, if not automatically fix them, but at the very least detect them that way. Uh, it's a little bit fiddly, but from some of the discussion we had about compiler things this morning, apparently the idea of inferring the L value of an assignment is not that far-fetched uh, from compiler plugins. Uh, Keith Cook was mentioning things like this. So that's just food for thought, but that might be a way to, at the very least, identify them. I, I, I was beaten by this myself on code I wrote, right? Yep. I put the CDF have in DevM allocated structures and wonder why everything was exploding in stress testing. Yep years and years ago so it's a very common pattern and it's always broken yeah so this all assumes that like uh the struct video device or, or struct chardev is embedded in the what you call the top level structure but if you look at how input devices work the dev input stuff evdev 
you actually always have to uh, dynamically allocate it. And uh, when you call free, uh, it actually doesn't do a real free, it just does a put. Mm. And it leaves a stop behind, which is dynamically allocated and managed by the input layer. So user space can still, as long as it's open, it can still do ioctals, but it will just get an error because it knows under the hood that it's been disconnected. And even you could error mod the driver which registered the input device because the memory is being managed by the input core layer. So they really have like this separation of the, the, the class device, as Greg calls it, is managed by the input core. And we could do something similar in video uh, for Linux where you always have to dynamically allocate your video dev. And then the lifetime of the video dev gets owned by the core and the driver just says, sorry, I'm, I'm gone. And all the ioctals will just error out. There's, there's, there's an issue with that, at least at the moment in the kernel, in the sense that you would need to guarantee when you CV in that link that you're not executing an ICTL at that point. So it's not really about uh, the user space keeping something open for a long time, but you need to make sure that the, uh, the, the system calls that are currently running in the kernel need to return first before you do that. So you need to wait for that. And that's the, the patch series I mentioned. I think that's, uh, that's fixable. Uh, there are some system calls that are blocking as well, blocking in driver code. Uh, so we would need to make sure that at unbind time, uh, the driver uh, will wake up any anything that's uh, that's being blocked to make sure that it, th those code parts can return. So there's a bit of work that needs to be done there, but that I think is uh, is totally doable. And then we could also uh, indeed look uh, look in, in that direction. But I uh, I hadn't thought about about tooling. I think it's a good point as well. Um, my kind of uh, default uh, assumption is that we. Uh, we, we have to try to make APIs that cannot be uh, used wrongly, or at least cannot be easily used, used wrong, but tooling is, uh, when it's not possible to create APIs that, uh, that can't be used wrong, I think tooling is also a very good idea. Yes, or, or simply, right. simply because even if you create a new one that's great, you still need to find where the existing bad cases are. Yes, so. yes, well, everywhere. <laughs> All right, we've got about five minutes left. Okay. Um, I had a quick question. So it's a hacky part, I guess. Um, so dev M, right? One way to look at it is it only has one rough count today, right? It's tied to the device. If the device goes away, it releases the reference, it's gone. Uh, that works as long as you're not interacting with the user space directly. Can we have like a big hammer kind of function saying, hey, this device might interact with the user space? With, the, with this file descriptor or whatever, and you can kind of plumb it in so that that just goes and increases the reference count for all the resources the device holds. And then when you close the file, you go release it all. So for example, in the video for Linux case, you would give the parent device that's holding the DevRes or DevM based resources. That wouldn't be like a perfect granular fix, but would that be something that could work? Um, so that's, so it's That's almost what, like copied user for copy from user, not in that sense, but anytime you interact with the user, you're saying giving to user or taking away from user kind of thing. So we have the ability in the kernel suddenly to track that and to know when, uh, so a, a CDEV is reference counted, uh, the, the opens from user space are reference counted, so we, so we know when user space will close the last file descriptor or unmap the last piece of memory. Uh, so that's, uh, that we have access to. And in, in the video for in this case, we have those release handlers and then you have to plumb that all the way through the driver as I explained. Uh, so that's, that's where I think it, uh, it doesn't scale. But the infrastructure is there and the, the helpers in the DRM system uh, think do what you describe by uh, tying the lifetime of, uh, of those memory allocations or those resources that need to, uh, to track the lifetime of the CDEV and track the lifetime of the user space access, tying them to the proper object. Um, so I think that's, that is doable, yes. Uh, with the KVAD, as I mentioned, that if we have multiple CDs that are registered in a, in a single driver for a single uh, physical device, then that's not going to work, I think. Yeah, that's what I was saying. You can still tie all of this to the main device that created these instead of the CDs. It's not granular like we'd like it to be, but no. <laughs> we, we can't do that again. You have classes, which is the user space representation that the CDs that also happens to be called a struct device, sorry. And then you have the devices on the bus. And that's where the resources, like the clocks and the interrupts and everything, again. There's two independent things here. Right, I'm asking you to tie to the real no, I'm device. I'm trying to say we need to sever that tie. <laughs> and they're independent. I mean, like Willie just like jokingly say, we want revoke, right? We want to revoke for forever. It's a kind of a revoke 
when we know this device is going away, we want to call back and revoke everything and clean everything up properly. Yep. And revoke is impossible to do. We keep trying it. If you look, even the BSDs just do it for one single character type. So nobody's really done revoke. Cherry's. What, what, what I was trying to say was that revoke is, yeah, revoke is really hard. And, and I think a lot of the solutions being proposed here are the same complexity as doing re revoke. And yep. we've been looking to do revoke for over 20 years and we still haven't done it. So it's really hard. I, I think maybe something practically that could be done is to maybe document the successful idioms for how do you structure the code, where do you put the functions, what do you call the functions, how does the control flow work in a way that yep. we know works. Like we have examples that do work. People have built simple examples that work. At we, least yeah. then it gives the humans the ability yes. to audit the mess, right? Like if you have a dynamically allocated structure with a KREF and a release function, we know that the I release agree. function should free every member of that structure yes, and it's we, the least auditable. We, we need good examples, good documentation, so that we'll know that nobody will read them, but at least we'll be able to point people to it. <laughs> <laughs> at, least you've got, at least you've got a common understanding, because right now, like your slides show that different subsystems are doing different things, yeah. solving the same problem in different ways. Absolutely. And the different Absolutely. solutions have known challenges, right? Yeah. But, uh, I thought is if we manage to move toward a world where the release function is embedded in a CARIF, which makes things easier, um, we could have a variant uh, of DevM KSLOC where we provide that CARIF and instead of freeing the structure, DevM would just dereference it. Uh, we do? Okay. I thought we'd just pass it every time we call CARIF put. I had to double check that. I forgot. It's been a while. Greg said, every char dev has a struct device associated with it. Yes. Then. Because it's the class. And the, 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 the class's release function acts as what you're asking for. Sure. But, OK. But DevM doesn't know whether what you, you no, the char dev, dev or something else. Right. The, the char dev is just one case of problem here. Well, uh, DevM doesn't work at all on anything that's not a physical device, because it's correct. tied into the And my, my idea was simply to, instead of using an DevM allocate that we do a hard free. We do a dev allocate, then then just drop the reference. But to do that, we need to know about that reference sufficiently. Yes. And so we could just have a charter version, but that's kind of a bit limited. Anyway, I, I think you actually have hit on something here because okay. it's uh, we're going to need oh. to wrap wrap up. Any yeah. last uh, comments, Laura? Yes. Uh, just to mention that the ammo issues already mentioned the race between unbind and ongoing system calls. I wanted to point on the last slide. Uh, he has two uh, two links to uh, mail threads about that two different patch series. Uh, so I think that would also be a very good candidate to uh, to resume the work on that because it's it's a real problem. You can crash. You, when you unplug a, a USB webcam, you can trigger a crash from user space, actually, because of that. Uh, I mentioned also the ordering of the, the DevS release and that thing about uh, severing the link or uh, revoking um, resources. Could we do that for clocks, regulator, GPIOs? Probably not. Uh, I'm a bit sad that those drivers, I think, will, will never be able to fix the, the problem there. And we'll have to live with the fact that they have to stay there forever without, uh, without being involved, probably. All right. Thank, Thank you. Thank you.